Hello everyone and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 3 in our uh, randomly generated world. We are playing as Germany, I'm currently in the middle of a war with Alaska, and crap just uh, got real interesting on us because Poland down here, our little trusty ally, has been attacked by the Netherlands and nationalist Spain, uh, which means that we are also at war now with the, uh, the Netherlands and with nationalist Spain. Um, Poland has uh, entered what what looks to be freakout mode at this point. They're moving whole bunches of infantry units around, um, don't really have a defended border. Uh, they have some decent territory in here to uh, to defend in, but uh, whether or not they'll be able to put up an effective defense is, uh, is an entirely different question. Uh, nationalist Spain is a pretty sizable country, and Poland really uh, isn't. Um, not to mention that they have the Netherlands army backing them up. I'm sure that we'll see a big old push of um, troops from the Netherlands supporting the uh, nationalist Spain lines. So, um, that said, there's really not much we can do to help Poland at this point. Uh, we are offering them um, uh, Lend-Lease support, but other than that, it's not like we can march through these neutral countries. Um, I was considering inviting Galicia to our faction. Um, they are currently right here, drifting towards our faction fairly quickly, actually, and we can make that go quicker if we, uh, if we actually influence them. Problem is, they're at war with both communist and nationalist China. Communist China is up here. We have a border with them, a very long border, so bringing them into the war wouldn't really help us uh, save Poland. And nationalist China is down here, and we will have a border with them once we finish with Alaska. So by inviting Galicia to our faction, we would then get involved in two wars on two completely separate fronts. Could we win them? Probably, but... Uh, that really doesn't help us in our uh, quest to save Poland. Excuse me, Nigeria over here has a Leninist government, and they are very far away from us. Uh, they are drifting towards us, but uh, there's really no possibility for us to get them in our faction in time to uh, to really help out Poland. Um, that also said, we don't have any ports uh, able to reach Poland, so it's not like we can actually send troops or material anyway, at least until we wrap up this war, capture this port, and then we might be able to send some men over here to... Uh, to try to liberate Poland, but I mean, that's a big army and they aren't going to be distracted on uh, on any different fronts. Um, speaking of the naval situation, um, the these people, uh, the Netherlands and Nationalist Spain, are in the Axis powers, and uh, San Marino is also in the Axis powers. We, we're not at war with them, but they control the uh, Suez Canal, which means we can't enter the Mediterranean this way. They also control Gibraltar, which means we can't enter the Mediterranean this way. So we are completely stuck outside of the Mediterranean. And our troops and ships in here, these destroyers and these transports, are also completely stuck inside the Mediterranean. They can't they can't leave the Mediterranean. We, uh, we're basically dependent on Poland here to protect our, uh, our little colony down here. I'm wondering, yeah, they can get across to Patra from Mezzalonghi. Yeah, they won't. They probably won't be able to get through Athena. Um, Serbia is at war with Lebanon, but Lebanon is nowhere near here, so uh, so we we probably don't need to worry about an attack from right here. Um, we need to move our sole garrison. I mean, they're going to need to do their job here over to Patra and uh, try to defend our territory. We might even need to uh, maybe uh, see if we can be of some help uh, in this in this war against uh, against the fascists. Um, really, I think we'd be lucky if we just protected our, uh, our little Greek colony down here. Um, I, I don't even know if that's within our power, at least until we finish off with Alaska, can actually use these transports to shuttle more troops down here. Maybe we can uh, protect Poland at the very least, possibly declare war on Nigeria, open up a new front over here, and blitz on through. Um, maybe we can uh, take him out from the flank, but we'll see. We'll need to deal with that uh, when we get to it. It is only uh, March, the end of March of 1938, so nobody really has super advanced technology yet. Most of these uh, battles will be done with uh, infantry and light tanks, as you can see. It, it really doesn't look like Poland has much in the way of tanks at all. They have uh, a few units over there. Um, Poland is in dire need of some help. They have a very long front to, uh, to contend with, and really there's nothing we can do about it. Um, so we need to focus on our war with Alaska. We need to focus on uh, taking this port over 
and then uh, deploying troops down here. Maybe we can help defend their capital. Uh, luckily, their capital is uh, fairly well behind the front lines. Um, we might be able to hold them uh, along this river and along some of their uh, mountainous provinces. Um, we should be able to put up a, a fairly coherent front line as, as long as Poland can actually hold until we're done with this war. Um, that said, we're probably going to need to speed up this war now. Um, because we have enemies, uh, um, also because the Netherlands controls the, uh, the Orsund over here, they control the, uh, the, uh, the Dutch Straits, we can't get to our ports. And these, uh, two carriers, these escort carriers we built, can't get out. So, in order to get out of here, we need to take and control this little section of territory over here from the Netherlands. Now that shouldn't be too difficult to do, we can just plop troops right here and have control of this island, and then plop troops right here and have control of this island. Attacking over a strait is, uh, is a very tall order. We'll, we'll be able to hold out there with uh, significantly less troops than, um, than they'll need to deploy to, uh, to take it over. Uh, and that should give us free reign in and out of, uh, of the Baltic Sea over here. But, uh, but that really doesn't help us too much in terms of, you know, taking out the Netherlands. Um, they are not a big country. Uh, we might be able to push them down if we get enough troops deployed up here and they're too focused on Poland. But once again, that's something that we need to deal with after we've beat Alaska. Uh, so needless to say, the game just got significantly more interesting. Uh, we need to uh, we need to rapidly wrap up this war, uh, finish it off. Um, I think we will stick with the plan, um, at least as much as we possibly can. Um, we'll continue advancing, continue expanding our, our army and uh, our navy. But uh, we're going to be at war, it looks like, for uh, a very long time. It's not going to be a, a quick and easy war like we thought it was. It's not going to be a slow expansion at the beginning of the game like we thought it was. And I think that's fine, you know, it's, it's definitely going to make it more interesting. Um, I think this plan is still a good plan. We're going to uh, advance to the river and then stop, reorganize the second army to uh, to cover our uh, our right flank over here, and then uh, slice through uh, right down the middle, and then uh, uh, reduce the pocket with our with our uh, left flank um, with the first army. Um, in the meantime, we are building a uh, third army over here. Right now, they only have one core with uh, four uh, relatively weak infantry divisions in it. We'll use them to defend our coast. It is possible for the Netherlands to make a naval inv invasion over here. Um, we do have our coast fairly well garrisoned, so I'm not too worried about that working uh, quite yet. But uh, in the meantime, we can't really uh, expand our, uh, our base of operations just yet. So we're going to uh, continue with what we were doing, um, other than uh, continuing to uh, distribute Lend-Lease aid to Poland. In fact, I think we are going to bump that up a little bit. This is going to hurt us, but... Uh, if we can help Poland uh, churn out more infantry units, um, maybe hold the line a little bit better, I think that'll be a fantastic thing. And it's only 40 um, units of industrial production. Um, I don't know how much how much does uh, Poland actually have. Uh, they have a decent amount. They have 163 industrial production. That's, uh, that's pretty darn good. Nationalist Spain has less. That's awesome. And we have no idea what the Netherlands is doing. So let's uh, let's increase their priority. Um, let's also focus on San Marino. Let's focus a little bit on all of them. Uh, we do have a decent amount of free spies. So uh, so that should be a-okay. It should be fine. And in the meantime, we're just going to continue our advance. Um, our infantry units have been left uh, pretty far behind the line here. Um, but we're just going to continue on pushing as quickly as we can to uh, to the river. They are putting up more of a fight at the capital. I, I thought we'd push them out of there right nice and easy, but they have managed to uh, get uh, a uh, mountain infantry division and a light armor division into the capital. Um, it is a fortified province, so uh, we are taking a minor penalty, um, a negative 18%. That's more than made up for by our uh, experience and our combined arms modifier. So we should be okay, but we will need to redeploy more of our uh, advancing troops to uh, to the battle. Um, in the meantime, we are going to just continue on pushing in uh, in as many directions as we can. We can't. We have the advantage here. Look at this. This is completely undefended front line. We need to take as much land as possible while we still have this opportunity. And central planning is now at four out of twelve. We have researched enough that we can actually get this grand battle plan, which increases our re re reinforcement chance significantly, which is 
absolutely fantastic. It is uh, a little bit um, inefficient to use our uh, our research points to research this. It's a 1940 attack. We're only in 1938, but I am going to bump it up as high as we possibly can. We want that as soon as possible. Um, in the meantime, while we're thinking of this, we should look at our politicians to see if maybe we have a head of state other than Burl Duncan that uh, that maybe we can we can use it's more warfare focused. Um, it doesn't look like. Nope, he's going to remain our head of state. Naval organization. Nah. We're doing okay in terms of politics. We do need significantly more. Um, no, I don't want to go into the uh, the communist faction. That would be that would be kind of bad. No changes so far. Ruling party support is necessary. Leadership modifier is always a good thing. Espionage bonus is okay. Counterintelligence might be fantastic. Yeah, let's go with the efficient sociopath. He'll give us a counterintelligent bonus. Orga organization regain rate is always very good. Uh, we could uh, focus on the attack and give us a, a bonus to reinforce chance um, while we are attacking. Um, or while we're defending, but I think the organization regain rate is probably the best thing. It just lets us use our troops more and more often. Um, we really don't have uh, naval practical that we're focusing on, but uh, I guess capital ship is uh, is a fairly important one. That will save us a lot of uh, a lot of industrial capacity in the long run. And a light aircraft, yeah, I think that makes just uh, just fine sense. You can go there instead. Try to push that infantry unit out. And our submarines have been uh, redeployed, and they are proving their worth. We're actually uh, making a name for ourselves in uh, in the Straits of Messina and in the uh, West Central Mediterranean Sea. Uh, in the meantime, Poland has uh, started to be pushed back from their own border. We'll see how well they're able to uh, to maintain their borders. They do have an advantage. They have more industrial capacity than nationalist Spain does. Um, but with the addition of reinforcements from the Netherlands, they may be hard-pressed. Um, it doesn't really look like they have much of a plan so far in terms of how and where to deploy their troops. I think they're just kind of scrambling. All right, it looks like we did actually uh, encircle this uh, this tank unit, which is fantastic. Very happy about that. Um, he is attempting to uh, force his way through, and I think we're going to attack in on him instead. Make him uh, break that attack off, hopefully. No? No, he might. Or we might just uh, obliterate him. That is a fairly skilled general, and uh, quite the uh, expensive unit that he's, uh, he's losing here. Attack in on the capital. Attack in on the capital. You should push in this way, and so should you. Actually, I want you to stay here. Support the attack, move the tank regiment up in here, and you support that attack. Let's surround the capital. I want you actually to go over here. And you guys have stopped advancing. Let's, uh, let's put together defensive lines along the outside of the river here. You aren't advancing, move into that province. They are counterattacking rather hard in here. Um, looks like we're doing very well at pushing them back, though, and we have a whole bunch of infantry divisions that haven't been engaged in combat yet because we can't get them to the front lines. That's why that uh, that theory is uh, such such an important thing to research. A grand battle plan doctrine. We are doing fairly well here. Uh, they. Uh, they are attacking efficiently, but we are also defending efficiently. We just need to get one of these units on the front lines before uh, before everything all uh, all turns to crap. Alternatively, how about we, uh, we counterattack with two of these units? Reduce the pressure on them. Yeah, there we go. They broke it off there, and we'll break it off here. More base infantry organization is always fantastic. 
that is inefficient research now though so I think we'll uh, even out our uh, our theory research a little bit and light cruiser anti-aircraft I suppose that's all right but it's inefficient research at this point um, I suppose in that case we might as well start bettering our submarines I mean we don't we don't plan on necessarily building too many more submarines but we might as well okay, you're doing that and you should uh, deny them this river coverage down there they've broken off their attack in this province which is great um, are you all second army yes you're all second army all right well we're gonna want to redeploy you down this direction uh, in a bit in the meantime we need to focus on actually pushing this way how is this attack going? Not too well. This is a very damaged tank unit, so we need to break off that attack, I think. Oh, he's being attacked. Alright, they broke off that attack. That's fine. You're attacking in here. That's some pretty damaged units you're attacking against. No communist China, you can't have military access. It's not going to happen. You just need to keep advancing. He's still attempting to break out of this province. That's fine. He can attempt to break out as much as he wants. Fighter pilot training advance. Let's get the ground crew training and increase our morale a little bit. Yes, please reduce him. Multiple combat penalty. He doesn't yet have the... Uh, Supplies penalty, but he does have significant armor advantage on us. We're not attacking with any real anti-tank units. And he obviously has a significant amount of armor. He might actually win that fight. Well, let's move the unit up. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna be forced to retreat here. Let's retreat back that way. Those are some tough tanks. Some tough, tough units. We're going to be fine in this battle, I think. We're gaining some excellent experience. This guy is going to be incredibly skilled. And they they are attacking into our rangers. These are the anti-tank. And they're attacking without artillery support. Oh, they renewed their attack on this province, but now we have all of our infantry divisions defending. And we can deploy another light armored. And another infantry corps division to our Ninth Corps. Wonderful. Alright, we just took this province and we pushed all of their the units in that province that were attempting to uh, keep a line open to their capital back into their capital. They are all retreating into their capital at this point. So we're going to uh, push the front line a little bit further back. Um, we want you to move over here. You can move down there. Um, I want you in here. No, I want you to stay there. You in there. And you to stay here. Yes. And you can join the attack. And you can also join the attack. This is going to be very taxing on our units. Yeah, we lost all organization on this unit. But we are forcing some of them back. This is just going to be an expensive battle all around. They really don't want to lose their capital. They have some very skilled generals. And we haven't really prepared an attack on this province quite yet. We're just kind of attacking as we get the opportunity to do so. Which isn't bad. You know, worse things have happened. Uh, we are also um, shifting down the line a little bit. They are really pushing hard on this province. Losing a lot of organization, but then so are our units as well. I think we'll be able to hold here. We may not be able to, but I think we will be able to. And we are still pushing in. Our, uh... 
our infantry managed to get into this province before his tank was able to get into this province. He is losing organization very quickly. He's doing his best to get out of this pocket we've trapped him in, but I really don't think there's anywhere for him to run to. And we have encircled his capital. Wonderful. Um, that does mean that uh, everyone in his capital has nowhere to run. So once we deplete one of his units, it will uh, we'll capture it. We're just going to do our best to uh, keep up the attack on this province. Hopefully from all sides, uh, except from the south where we need to uh, make sure to defend. Um, extend the line a little bit further south. Uh, you down there. And you I want over here. You're very weak, but you can go right there. Just uh, just set up along this front. We want them to redeploy as many people as they can so that we can split their army in two. This will be a nice encirclement for us. If, uh, if we get reinforced, there we go. Wonderful. So now we can break off this infantry division's attack. Uh, you're very weak. You're very weak. You're already joined in. Push them out of Pavlovsk. Wonderful. And we are taking over more leadership giving provinces, which is a good thing, which is wonderful. How are we doing in this province? The units are starting to show some wear, but theirs are as well. They will need to call off this attack soon. Our, they have bombed us twice. We've had one air battle in this province. Our interceptors, oh boy, you're weak. Yeah, go back home, get some repairs. You don't have any orders. Well, let's replace you. Air intercept. Rest the skies from them. Um, we are well out of range for you, but we captured this airbase, so let's move you up. Here are multi-rolls. They haven't seen combat yet. Let's rebase you to the forward base. Carrier air group is still on air intercept. Let's, uh... Let's keep you on air intercept, but let's extend your range a little bit further out. That's a lot of units going to be destroyed when we take his capital. Estonia, you want to build some multi-rolls? Yeah, fine, whatever. But their defenses do keep on just getting stronger and stronger as more and more men do uh, do retreat into that province. But we've pushed them to the river here. Um, need to push them from the river down here. Not much we can do until we uh, get get uh, their capital and uh, can redeploy all of these men down to uh, to the front lines. They have pushed one of our infantry divisions back. Let's move one over there. And we have defeated them in their capital. And we've defeated them up here. Fantastic. Okay. So you can move into there. Set up along the river. Set up along the river. Good and good. Capital's taken, so let's keep on uh, telling our men to set up along the river. And all of the units that were in that, that their capital were just completely destroyed. Walk down in this direction. We're going to need to do yet another uh, reorganization of our units just as soon as uh, as they all get uh, get redeployed and in, into and into position. Good. Of course, we haven't taken their capital until we've actually walked into it.
But that was an, uh, an efficient breakthrough. There are no units contesting us. Aircraft carrier armor. It's always good. Let's keep on researching that. And we have another tactical bomber. Good. Where's our attack uh, right now? Oh, you're bombing right now. Okay. But we'll deploy you... Not that. That's a small airfield in this province. And that was the first attack that we have, so we'll call these guys the second attack. Oops. Attack. There. Good. And now we have wasted money on reinforcement, but not that big of a deal. Let's take a look at how Poland's doing. I mean, it's a stable front line. It's a more stable front line than the Alaskan front line right now. They haven't lost too much land. Um, they've... It looks like they attempted a... Uh, cutting off the this ranger's unit and then were cut off themselves. So they need to advance up in here. And they're probably not going to. Um, they haven't been pushed back in the north too much. I mean, this this used to be their land. It's not theirs anymore. Um, they're almost pushed back to the mountains, and then uh, the nationalists will have a much more difficult time of it. But yeah, it's looking bad across the entire front. It's just uh, it's just looking bad for them. Meanwhile, in this province, they are beating us to a pulp, and we are beating them to a pulp as well. These. These darn... They stack their tank divisions. Like, these are some tough nuts to crack. We, we definitely need to start making more of these infantry divisions with anti-tank brigades in them. Because just focusing on artillery might be good, like really good, against an infantry army. But, boy, it's showing its weakness against these tanks. They are... I mean, look at that. They're down to 65% strength, and they're still losing units. It's just, it's going really, really badly for them, but they're not breaking off. They just, they've just basically completely abandoned the front line, counterattacking where they can. Well, let's keep on keeping on. Stop at the river. Stop at the river. Recover, relax, reorganize. More agriculture is always a good thing. Now it's inefficient, though. So let's find a... I don't know. I don't know what to research anymore. Better research efficiency. It's all right that it's inefficient research. Better armored divisions. We do need to replace the armored cars. Oh, no, we don't. Okay, yeah. All we need to do is upgrade these uh, cavalry brigades to motorized basically as quickly as is possible. Um, we're not upgrading our cavalry units at all, so they're just going to fall further and further into uh, uselessness because they're going to be fighting with uh, 1936 weapons. And I mean, it's outdated already. It's 1938, but at least it's only two years outdated. Soon it'll be four or five years outdated. My goodness. This battle... They, we outnumbered them two to one, but they had armored units. So we lost 4,000 men, they only lost 2,000 men. My goodness gracious. Look at how weak our uh, surviving units are. That is insane. They're really piling it on. I thought it would be a bit more difficult than this, but it seems like we've already completely destroyed the, uh, the enemy. Um, I thought we'd need to uh, redeploy the second army um, down across the defensive line. I thought we'd actually have a little bit of difficulty holding that defensive line while we uh, while we uh, do phase two. But it looks to me like, aside from a few pockets of resistance places, they don't even have enough men to cover their entire front line. Like, these units have been in this province long enough that they've been unresisted for seven days. They've been able to dig in reorganized for seven days, and no one has come to oppose them. They could have been advancing that entire bloody time. So, how close are they to surrendering? Not incredibly. We've, we've got about 30%. Um, yeah, we've, we haven't we've taken that many provinces from them. Um, 
so we're just going to keep on advancing. Like we're just going to advance as quickly and as we as we possibly can from from every direction. There are four units on this line contesting 24 of our units. We're just going to push through as bloody quickly as we possibly can. I know it's not efficient, but I mean a lot of these guys don't even have anything to uh, to go up against. We're just just going to push through. Now this would be a poor decision attacking across the river into an armored unit. So we're going to keep these units here, but there's really no reason for us to be sitting on our hands here. We just need to keep advancing. If they're not going to contest our advance, we need to keep advancing. Thanks for watching the video, everyone. Feel free to like, comment, or subscribe if you so feel the desire to. If not, don't worry about it. Um, I'm always welcoming to uh, constructive criticism. Go ahead and leave it in the comments, or go ahead and send me a, a uh, private message. Either way, I hope you'll join me for the next video. Thanks much, and I'll see you all next time.